Yo, what's good? I know it's been a while, but uh, this is a new episode. As you can obviously tell, um, this episode is with Biz the Prince. He has a new EP entitled Against the Grain that's entirely produced by Fourth Disciple that is available as of today. So go ahead and check that out on uh, all streaming platforms, iTunes, wherever you uh, get your music. Uh, Fourth Disciple was supposed to be on uh, this interview as well, but unfortunately he couldn't make it. So I had a chance to chop it up with Biz a bit more about his background and everything like that, being signed to Koch and whatever. However, though, I must say that with this interview, it begins a bit sudden due to some technical difficulties that I had on my side that I realized toward the very end. This uh, this interview goes deep straight into the background of the EP uh, and its long delay. So uh, go ahead and check that out. Check us out. Wu Tang Podcast on Twitter. Wu Tang Podcast at Gmail dot com. Peace out. Okay. Yeah. Again, um, when we first started out um, in the early recordings, um, the original title was called Back to Basics. You know what I mean? Um, when we changed the title, what we did was we, we recorded enough songs for about a full length. You know what I mean? Like we got we got way more than, um, you know, five songs, which is the EP. Um, when we decided to um, crunch it down to an EP, you know, we came up with the name Against the Grain because, you know, um, from the time we first started recording, you know, the, the sound changed in the industry, you know. So, um, you know, the sound is a little bit different. And um, what we wanted to do was kind of bring back that old, um, that old and nostalgic sound, you know, the boom bap, you know, that that whole feeling, you know, but still in the same breath, we ain't want to alienate ourselves from, um, you know, the young people, because I, st- I do want to connect with the young people also, you know what I mean? But so it gives you that old feel, you know what I mean? But it's still um, new and modern enough for, you know, the people from this generation to rock with it, you know what I mean? But it's still like against the grain of you know, the sound of what's dominating, you know, TV, airways, and, and, you know, the whole social media platform right now. Right, right. And, you know, what's, um, what's interesting about this, because, uh, you know, I was listening to other interviews that you've done, and, you know, you, uh, you know you're, you're making it more of a point to kind of go back to, uh, you know, more, I guess, you know, kind of boom babish, but, you know, not necessarily, like, you know, outdated. And, um, you know, I have conversations about this all the time with different people on, you know, whether it be on a podcast or just in my everyday life. Um, and, you know, it's, it's such a good time to really be doing this because, you know, this sound is coming back, you know, since the 90s has, you know, kind of, you know, gone away for a bit. Now it's kind of becoming more chic, but, you know, if you think about the way that you know the music industry is going uh people are becoming more independent and um it just opens up different lanes for for more genres at least to me um you know so you have people like you know rock marciano you got people yeah. like you know um inspected deck who's doing the whole czar face thing which you know who, who you have collaborated with and everything like that so i think it's a really good time to do something like this absolutely um i didn't hear rock's last album but i heard the part one i think the rosebud that that joint is crazy um that's what i'm saying like that sound I feel like because um, everything is so independent now and you could pretty much, you don't got to rely on a label or whatever. You could just pretty much get these distribution deals on your own and put the music out and have more control of your music. Like you said, it's the perfect time to just go back to that sound if that's what you want to do. You know what I mean? Like you're not really in a position where you're forced to, you know, um, go along with what's, what's out at the time. You know what I mean? Right, right. Right. Um... And, uh, and, and, all right, and so you're from, I, I'm probably going to, because I've been looking at, like, how, how you're supposed to pronounce, the, pr- pronounce, like, the name of the city, but it's Bayonne? It's Bayonne, Bayonne, yeah. Okay. All right, cool. Um, so, um, I know it's, it's kind of, it's a, it's a smaller town, a smaller city in New Jersey, so can you, like, describe it for me a bit, like, your upbringing and everything like that? Oh, yeah, all right, well, um, uh, reason why, like, where it's at, I'm literally, like, five minutes across the um the bridge the bayonne bridge to staten island like i could literally walk if you downtown i could walk to staten island it's like in between staten island jersey city and um newark you know what i mean it's hudson hudson county yeah it's a small city you know um on hudson county new jersey um my upbringing i mean it was interesting you know what i mean like i grew up in housing projects but um Bayonne is a little different to where like it's a it's 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 like a melting pot you know what I mean it's a lot of different cultures so like where I grew up it was majority black and Spanish but the whole the city as a whole is like a melting pot of Italian Polish Ukrainian um Puerto Rican Dominican it's like a whole bunch of different um races you know what I mean so like when we went to school like when I 
my upbringing when I was home, like in the projects was one thing. And then when I, when we left the block and went to school, you know what I mean? It was like a whole different thing. You know what I mean? So like early on, you know, I grew up like around like different cultures, different types of music, different people from an early age. You know what I mean? So it was, yeah, it was, it was like, it was dope. It was dope upbringing for me. You know, the same, same old shit, nothing new, you know, um, I, I was an athlete, you know what I mean? I started, I played basketball. My older brother, I mean, my younger brother uh, went to Villanova. He was a McDonald's American, you know what I mean? So we, we come from sports, you know what I mean? And then I transitioned, you know, later on in life to rap then. Right. So, um, so did you get into ramen, uh, like, uh, like you know, uh, within the midst of your, um, you know, you playing basketball and everything, or was that after the fact? In the midst of it, um, okay. young, I, I always was into writing, you know, um, I, I would say like around 11, 12, I just started like freelance writing, you know what I mean? Like poetry and stuff like that. And then, um, what I would do was this is, you know, it's still tape cadets. It's, there's still tapes around this time when I'm young. So what I would do is I would record, um, album cuts like I, I would play album cuts like from cds i would record it and then what i would do is i would rap over them like over the actual songs like say it's like a, a wu-tang song a pun song i would take like the the flow from the song but i would just put my own words to it and that's how i actually started rapping you know what i mean like because it wasn't instrumentals at the time it wasn't like you could go on youtube or napster or anything like that and find an instrumental unless you had like a b-side you know to a to a record or something so i would just rap over the beats like that and then it, it went from writing, and then once people started, you know, getting hip to me rapping, then, you know, I started doing battling, you know, like little battles and shit like that, and getting my name known in, in my area. And then it just, it just steamrolled from there. Mm, that's what's up. So, um, so did, uh, did you have any, um, did you have like any uh, uh, people in your family who also did music? Yeah, my pops, my pops dabbled with DJing. You know what I mean? Um, just locally though, nothing major. You know what I mean? He he was the DJ, and I got an older brother that rapped. Um, Hot to read. Um, he he was actually like around the whole Wu Tang Killer Army circle um, when I was younger. Um, so like it, it's not really like a big musical family. Like I said, I got a couple people, but for the most part, it was just something that I like. I got into on my own. You know what I mean? And you know how just like anybody else when they first start getting into music. People didn't really know. And then once they started knowing I was doing it, I kind of shy from it because I, I wanted to, you know, like perfect it before I started actually letting people hear my rhymes and shit like that. You know what I mean? I didn't really want people to hear me. So I like I started writing, I would say, like I said, 11, 12, but recording, I didn't really start recording. So like, I was way into high school. You know what I mean? Like 15, 16. Mm -hmm. Now, yeah. <laughs> now during this time uh, uh was your name uh biz at the time still did you ha did you have like other names before that <laughs> my yeah my first name <laughs> <laughs> you know everybody go through the name transition my first name actually was busy b okay and then i didn't know that it was an old school rapper <laughs> with that same name <laughs> so i wound up changing it because my older brother was like yo you know you can't be busy b there's an old school rapper and i'm like where at first i'm like man fuck that but he's like nah man you gotta change it so I went from Busy B, I changed it to Young Biz, and I added the my, the Prince was always my alias. And then after a while, I just I just took the Young off and combined Biz the Prince together. You know what I mean? So it was always Biz because that was just my tag name. You know what I mean? Just from my neighborhood and playing sports and all that, it was always Biz Busy. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so, so do you, um, cause I mean, you've been doing this for, for a long time and I'm sure you have all kinds of interesting stories just being in the industry and everything like that. But do you remember, um, the very first, well, do you still have the very first, like the very first like song that you ever made? Oh man, no, nah, I don't have it. I, I don't remember the first, I remember like maybe like the third or fourth, but like the very first one, I don't have it. Like I actually was actively looking for it a little while ago. I was 16 and, um, Oh, that shit was probably trash though, bro. <laughs> yeah, I was still learning, you know what I mean? But um yeah, I, I don't I don't actively have it, you know what I mean? But that that was a while ago. That was a while ago. Yeah. So, um all right, so so trans so going like so talking a bit a bit more a bit more about um basketball, you know, you you were taking it seriously and um 
I was looking at I, I think it was the uh, the docu like the doc, the little small um documentary to uh, for Back to Basics. Yeah, and yeah. um and you know you were talking about your injury and so um you know it was a you had a, sh- a shoulder injury and I noticed it I think it was on your your right shoulder right. Mm-hmm. That's so, my shooting hand. That's my that's my dominant hand. So okay, because I was yeah. going to ask, you know, when that happened, um, and especially, you know, if you were like, you know, if you, if you couldn't like, you know, play sports, I'm pretty sure that you would probably gravitate to writing even writing rhymes even more. So was that hard for you? It it was at the time. Um, I at the t- I was so I was so upset because like when I came back from my injuries, I was never the same. So like, I really ain't want to do shit else. You know what I mean? Because that was like my that's my first love to play ball. You know what I mean? So once I couldn't get to, I knew at that point I couldn't get to the level that I wanted to get at because I was never the same, just like confidence wise. But I did catch myself like writing more and focusing more on the music around that time. And that was around that age too, 16. You know what I mean? Like when I first started recording and shit like that. You know what I mean? Um, I was getting in trouble too around that time too because it was like a lot of idle time. You know what I mean? You know, you know, you know when you're playing ball, you know, you on your team, you got practice and shit like that. And so once it got to the point where I was hurt and I couldn't really, you know, practice and, and play ball like that, I was, you know, getting in trouble, you know, in the streets doing little shit like that. And then, But at the same time, just me being out and experiencing things like that, it, it kind of helped me with the rhymes too. You know what I mean? It gave me more shit to rap about. Mm-hmm. Right, yeah. <laughs> I, uh, I, can, I can only imagine. Um, <laughs> yeah. So, so, um... So you've been all right. So you've been dealing with uh, you know E one for a while, but you were originally signed to I guess what was then Black Globe Records. Yeah, Black Globe. Um, yeah, we started that in about two thousand four, two thousand five. Um, yeah, Rasan, that was Rasan's baby right there. And um, him, he came up with fourth. I don't know if you know his background, but he, I mean, he's been on fourth since like I shit, I might say ninety ninety one, maybe probably before that. Probably before that, yeah, because he was um he he was you know um, managing Killer Army back then. Oh, that's oh okay oh mm-hmm. all right makes yeah. a lot of sense because I, I was going to ask you uh, how how did you and a fourth disciple uh, link? It seems like you guys are like um you know pretty close creatively. Oh yeah yeah that's like my brother that's my big brother right there. I've been working with fourth since around the same time two thousand four two thousand five so you going on about thirteen years now. Man, yeah, you know, I was, I'm thinking, you know, because, you know, you were, I mean, because, you know, even during that time, you know, when you were, um, uh, I think it was the the the, uh, the Prince of Jersey project, you know, you had Freeway and all these other, um, you know, veterans on your project. And I was just mm. kind of thinking, because um, I, 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 I think, I'm pretty sure you're a bit older than me, but, you know, even compared to like them, you were probably, you know, pretty, uh, you know, way younger. So, yeah. Um, yeah. I can only imagine, like, at least, like, being that age and, like, you know, being signed relatively young and, like, to have, like, all those kinds of people around you who, like, know the business well, like, my son, like, Fourth, Freeway and everything like that was, like, a really good look for you. Oh, absolutely. Especially being on the road. You know what I mean? I learned a lot because, like, we always been independent. You know what I mean? So, like, just being on the road with them at a young age, you know what I mean? Um, I learned a lot, you know, just, like how to deal with promoters and booking shows and, you know, how to just live on the road. You know what I mean? Like, from playing the hotel and all that shit, you know what I mean? Um, they taught, they definitely taught me a lot, man. Especially Q, Freeway, um, K Slay, also, you know what I mean? I learned a lot from being around K Slay. Mm, man, how mm. how how is K Slay in person? He, he, he seems <laughs> like he, he seems like an interesting dude. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he he's a real one, bro. He's he's real. He's he's real old school, you know, direct, you know what I mean? But he's a genuine dude. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah, I fuck with him. I, I just like people like that. You know what I mean? Genuine. He's not industry at all. I tell you that much. Uh, he's definitely not industry. All right. Well, you know, it, um, just knowing how Casey is, it's a good thing that that uh, that uh, someone told you about the Busy B name before you met him. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, that would be crazy. Um, actually, Biz Marquis too. I mean, it's not. It wasn't the same. I actually met him before. You know what I mean? Then when I told him my name, he 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 gave me love though. He shook my hand and said, "Keep pushing." It wasn't nothing. But yeah, the busy B thing, I had to change that because that, that was identical. <laughs> I, it was heartbreaking though because that was my name. Like so, you know, for me to have to change it, I'm like, damn. You know what I mean? Because like I said, I'm I'm like I, said, I don't know how old you are. I'm 31. You know what I mean? So, but at the time, like I was like 15, 16. So I didn't really know anything about him. You know what I mean? So um. 
I didn't, I, you know, I had no idea. So once I had to change the name, I'm like, damn, I got to start back from the drawing board. Like, you know, I had this name forever. But it, it's, it, you know, it comes with territory. It's all good. Right, right. I feel you. Um, well, yeah. So, um, I'm 27, so I'm I'm a, I'm a bit younger, a bit younger. Um, mm-hmm. but uh, but yeah. So, but like, so also, you know, when you were like, you know, um, you know, really getting into the industry and everything like that. This was like during like, you know, uh, Koch, you know, which is for, I guess for some of the listeners, we don't know that, you know, uh, Koch is now E1 pretty much. Um, mm. That was like during the heyday, right? Like when they were making uh, like a lot of money, the yeah, saw, era and everything like that. Yeah, this was like Fat Joe Lean back, Jim Jones balling. Like that was that ever, like when Koch, Koch was like, they was knocking out the park at the time. You know what I mean? Like they had hit game, game had went to Koch. Um... Shit, they had D-block. everybody at the time. Yeah, D Block. Yeah, yeah, D, yeah, D, yeah. Actually, we had a tour set up. It wound up not working. I passed Detroit. It was a lot of big artists on Koch at that time. That's right. He wasn't. Yeah. I, I forgot about Pastor Troy. That's yeah, right. he put. Yeah, he dropped about two projects. Pastor Troy on um, Project Pat before he got locked up. It was, they had a lot of artists on on that label at the time. Um, and then they was all hitting out the park. I guess at the time, what it was was artists that was you know, once major and they had their um they had their fan base and all that, they was going to Koch, taking the fan base with them, you know, because they could get the um, you know, more dollars for per album and all that stuff and, and control the stuff more, you know. It's kinda I guess they they might have been the birth of like what what we're seeing nowadays. You know what I mean? Because, like now everything is super independent. Like you're seeing dudes come out the gate you know, just with a distribution deal or with a partnership, but they selling, you know, hundred 120 out the gate you know no major labor at all because you don't really need it nowadays you know you got so yeah you got social media i mean with the power of social media and your fan base you know as long as if you hit the road and do what you got to do you know what i mean you don't because radio is not really you know what it was back then so you don't really need it as much you know all right so um yeah so with that um you know just being like just being you know, a part of like, you know, that kind of that legacy where, you know, people were just like, you know, they could go just straight independent, go to cash and everything like that and just like really clean up. Um, How do you feel about the transition with, you know, streaming and everything like that? And, you know, and, you know, going from, I would say, an industry that revolved more around, uh, revolved way more around the music and just like kind of pushing the product itself to now a time where it's really about your brand. Yeah. So how do you feel about that? Um... I still adjusting to it, <laughs> you know what I mean? Because I I come from the era of um, like you still had to press up CDs and, and go face to face and pass them out, you know, stuff like that. And it was more so about the music, like you said. To whereas now, you know, fans are buying into the artists. I would say it's really like 85 percent the artists and their brand before the music. You know what I mean? Like they're buying it. You know the the antics on social media and. The, you got the whole, like, when the era of the trolling, you know, everybody's trolling and doing all types of crazy shit for attention. And that's kind of, like, the forefront before the music nowadays. So for artists like me that comes from actually, like, being passionate about making music, you know what I mean? I'm still adjusting to it, you know? Yeah, man, you know, especially because, um, you know, it's... And I guess this is also interesting, like uh, you and Fourth Disciple, and maybe uh, maybe one of the reasons why you guys do get along is because you know both of y'all like just in interviews and everything like that, y'all appear to be like real humble dudes, and then y'all come from, um, you know, y- y'all both come from like you know s- similar kind of cities, at least when it comes to, like population and stuff like that. So, and but also, you know, you guys like like really like to take time like with your work, and so I, I recall you saying something about that, and I think everyone who is listening to the Wu Tang podcast knows, you know, about how meticulous Fourth Disciple is when it comes to his stuff, which is why ninety nine percent of it is so fucking good. Yeah, he's very <laughs> Fourth, <laughs> Fourth a perfectionist, boy. I tell you, he's a perfectionist. Against the grain, it's it's five tracks, right? Mm-hmm. Five joints. Um, I got deck on one, and the other four is solo. Did you guys make more? All right, well, first of all, like, all right, so when you guys get into the studio, like, what do y'all need? Oh, <laughs> man, the process. <laughs> yeah, like, the process. Yeah. I want to hear about this process. Shit, I need my hand. I'm a Henny drinker. You know what I mean? So I need my Henny. Fourth need his weed. You know what I mean? And we get right. Like, fourth, fourth is a real, like, all right. I feel like you have beat makers and then you have producers. You know what I mean? You, I think it's a difference. I don't know if the young people really understand what I mean by that. 
Fourth is not really like an email dude. You know what I mean? He's not going to email you a beat and then you go in the studio, record some shit and send it back to him. Like Fourth wants to sit down with you face to face and create the, the song from scratch. So like he's literally going to create the beat like right in front of you. You know what I mean? So he's like, listen, you know, we get right. We do what we got to do. And he's like, yo, what's on your mind? Like, what you, you know, what you want to talk about? Boom, boom. He might play a beat where it's, it's just the drums. You know what I mean? Like, I don't want to give out this whole shit, but, you know, just for example, it might be like just a bare drum beat. You know what I mean? And I'll, I'll start something and then he'll build around like my vocals and what I'm doing. You see what I'm saying? So he's like, he's completely producing the song. You see what I'm saying? Like, so we, that's how we work. And it just goes from one to two to three to four to five. You know what I mean? And we just we just knock them out just like that. You know, organically. Um, yeah, that's 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 our process right there. So you know, it's not it's none of that like email. It's never been a, you know, a, I got a beat for you, biz. What's your email? I'm gonna send it to you, and then you do what you do. Yeah, we don't work like that. <laughs> Because, you know, also, too, I, another reason why you guys, um, you know, work well together, I would imagine, is because, like, both of you guys, like, re- really versatile. Like, you know, a lot of the stuff that you did, um, you know, a while back, um, you know, really balanced. You have, like, a mixture of boom bap. You know, you can do some, like, some more party songs, like, mm-hmm. kind of, like you know, middle of the road songs. And, um, you know, just Fourth Disciple, I mean, he's kind of, well, not, I don't want to say all over the place, but, you know, he could do, like, dark, murky, killer army type shit. But then he could do, like, some, you know, some boom bap shit or, like, you know, something, you know, something even, you know, a bit more different than that, which I'm pretty sure probably, you know, works well, um, at least for you also, because I'm pretty sure that uh, if you guys, well, I think you guys are doing like another project, right? Eventually, or you coming out with a full length soon. Oh, yeah. I mean, we, yeah, we might as well. I mean, like I said, we got, <laughs> we got a bunch of songs. It's not just these five. We did way more and then we could always add more onto it. You know what I mean? But like right now, it's all about this one. And then, you know, we see how it turns out and then we could just flip it and slap another out if we want one. So and this is all. This is something I always like to ask uh, MCs that well, when I talk to when I talk to them. Um, what is your writing process like? Um, with me, I, like what I like to do first is get the concept. You know what I mean? Like I, I'll get like a concept in my head or like what I want to talk about, and then I I start with the hook. And then once I build the hook, like I don't write my hooks. I, I'll freestyle it. Like I get a melody or um a cadence. I'll freestyle it like the, whatever the melody cadence is, then I put words to it. And then once I get that down, then I start working on the verses. I don't know if like, like people that know me and they listen to my music, you know, even though I, I, you know, I preach like bars and lyrics and all that, I'm still heavy. I always been like real heavy on um having hooks, catchy hooks and shit like that. You know what I mean? That's part of my style. So I always start with the hook first. And I could literally do that without a beat. I don't even need the instrumental. You know what I mean? Like I could build it in my head and then write, and then I can put it to an instrumental. You know what I mean? Like, I don't have to have, like, have a beat to write. You know what I mean? So, I don't know. I got, like, a weird little process. But, you know, I know every artist is a little different, you know. Right. Yeah, I mean, yeah, and, and that's another reason why that's a, that's another reason why it's, like, it's always fascinating because everyone is so different. They just have, like, a certain kind of quirk um, when it comes to how they go about doing things. So, do you uh do you still write uh you still use like a pen and pad or you just write on your phone nowadays? Yeah, I write on my phone now. Like, <laughs> I, yeah, the pen and pad stopped about um I say about 2012. Yeah, about 2012, 13. I put the, I, I hung the pen up. <laughs> damn, that's damn. Dude, you know, it's crazy. Kind of late though. <laughs> it, it is. Yeah, it is late, y'all. It's crazy because on my the Prince of Jersey song um album, I mean, I had a, a song called Part of Me for Produce. And the song was like, it was a concept record where I was rapping about my pen. Like it was my love, like a female. It was a dope low concept joint. Um, and it's funny because I, 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 I go back and listen to that song and I'm like, Man, I don't even use a pen no more. It's crazy. <laughs> it's just crazy. You know what I mean? But yeah, it's just easier for me. You know, just to, I always got my phone in my hand. You know what I mean? So I just, you know, anytime I get a thought, I could just grab my phone, jot it down, save it and you know, come back to it whenever I need to. You know, but, you know, uh, another thing about, um, you know, like this world that we're living in where, you know, rappers, uh, you know, write on their phones and it's more about branding more so than the music. Um, I, I can imagine that, you know, it's harder, especially like for someone like you, because, you know, you you are a family man, too. So, you know, you don't exactly have time to be doing like the Bow Wow Challenge or, you know, just doing something that that, that could like 
you know, something maybe a bit more outland, you know, you don't have time for that. So um, how do you go about balancing, you know, your um, your, your music career with um, with your family life? Um, I feel like my career is my career, you know what I mean? So I, I feel like I'm always going to make time for that and do what I got to do. But at the same time, I feel like, like my age, I'm not one of them people that's, I'm not going to be 30, 35, still trying to be 19. You know what I mean? Like, I'm just forever growing. I'm, I'm maturing. So I just move, you know, with, like, the age I get, you know, I just move with it. You know what I mean? So, like, I know I'm not going to be doing no silly shit that, like, a 17, 18-year-old kid is doing for clout on Instagram. You know what I mean? Like, I just can't do it. You know what I mean? Like, I, it won't feel organic to me. You know what I mean? And I feel like you don't have to. I, I do see a lot of artists that, or even older than me, they get caught up in that because they feel like they want to chase something. You don't got to do that. At the end of the day, just as long as you know who you are and who and, and yourself, you know what I mean? You just do what you got to do. You don't got to chase what the, another person is doing. I heard Russell Simmons say that. Um, I don't know the exact quote, but he said, like, there's no book to this when it comes to hip hop. You know what I mean? Like, you can't look at 50 Cent story and say, like, 50 did this. So I'm a copy it. Cause like, I use him for example. Cause I remember when 50 came out, it was the whole, like, I got shot nine times and it worked for him. But after that, you seen like a lot of rappers came out like, yo, I got shot seven times. I got shot 10 times, but it didn't work the same for them. You know what I mean? Like everybody's story is different. And I think it's the same thing now with the social media. It's kind of like, you'll see one person go viral doing one thing. And then a lot of artists, are, they'll, they'll try to copy that, but it won't work the same for them. You know what I mean? So I'm just like, yo, let me just stay in my lane to do what works for me. You know what I mean? And, like, I know I got my family and shit, so, you know, I just know how to balance it. You know what I mean? I just balance both. It's, it, it really ain't no thing to me. You know what I mean? Like, I don't mix the two. You know what I mean? I got my family over here. I got my career over here. And I'm, I just make it work. Yeah, you know, I mean, and I guess, I guess it's just, well, obviously, I guess it just varies from person to person because, you know, I've seen people and like, you know, their, you know, their personal life will just, you know, get all, you know, all into their, their music career and just fucks everything up on both sides in different ways. Um, but, you know, like one thing about hip hop now, you know, since it's like, it's older, you know, older now, you know, and, uh, it's still kind of seen as like a young man's game, which, in which is not, I mean, you know, like, uh, I, I remember I was talking to a friend, you know, like, like Drake, like. I said, you know, Drake is like 30, 31. Like, you know, he's not like a 22 year old, you know. Nah, we're the same age. Like yeah, we're the same age. <laughs> yeah, you know, when I, when I said it, like to my homegirl, she was like, really? He's 31? I was like, yeah. Like, or like, or even Future. Future's like 33, 34. So, um, and you know, like in Jay Z, which I think, you know, with uh, 444, which is like the perfect album, like to really try, that really, I think kind of defines the the way hip hop is kind of going with regards to like, you know, how it's aging. And I think it's all for the, you know, all for the better, even Rock Marciano too, you know. Yeah, yeah, I lo y'all love his sound. I, I, does he make his own beats or does he get uh, production from elsewhere? Um, he he makes the great majority of his beats. Um, so he made like a lot of stuff on um, on Rosebud's Revenge. Mm. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, like, I, I don't know, man. I just feel like, with the way everything is so independent and you know what I mean you got access to everything I feel like people should play with more sounds I don't know why artists don't do that enough you know what I mean like people should they should play with more sounds that was the main reason why we put the truth out first and the truth is like it's it's obviously different you know what I mean like it's like we we got the soul sample in there it's the boom bap like it's purposely made like that it's like we wanted it to stand out from everything that's out right now you know what i mean because why not you know what i mean like i feel like you got so many different sounds out there you got access to you know different records you can sample and things like that you might as well just give it a shot it don't always have to be a a trap beat or you don't need to listen to the billboard top 10 and be like i'm gonna copy that do that like why do it you know what i mean like you don't need to do that no more it's not really the time of you know when the radio dominated and you was like chasing hits you don't got to chase hits no more you know what I mean? You could just find your sound and then build your fan base from there. You feel what I'm saying? So I think this is the perfect time for artists to, you know, whatever sound you want to get into, just do it. You know what I mean? Rock Marciano, that sound, even like that Dipset sound. I remember that sound when they came out, it was so new and refreshing. And it's like people got away from it. Like even somebody was to bring that type of sound back. I think this would be the perfect time for that. 
so you know so since like you know since you take your time with like uh you know with your uh, music and fourth does as well um you know kind of also thinking about the the climate that we're living in do you ever think about the fact that you know you may not uh come out excuse me come out with like enough music like to kind of like satiate the audience or, or something like that not really because um I do work with a lot of local artists where I do a lot of I do I do a lot of music with them locally to where like it's not through a label like not through E1 nothing like that like I'm just putting it out so I do stay busy you know what I mean it might be on a lower level and like a lot of people don't really know but I ghostwrite a lot I do a lot of ghostwriting and songwriting and stuff too you know what I mean I'm getting heavy the older I get I'm getting more into that because I can write more than hip hop I can write R and B you know what I mean so um. I'm starting to dibble and dabble into that. So I keep myself busy. You know what I mean? I'm not really like one of those people that is going to get into quantity. You know what I mean? I don't got to put out a hundred records. I feel like um, quality is better than quantity. Even though the market we in, you know, everybody is it's so fast. You know, you put a record out today, two weeks, they're like, all right, where's, it, where's, it, where's your next one? You know what I mean? Like we over that already. I, I feel like um, you still have artists that, you know, stick to that, the quality thing, you know what I mean? Like, I, I'm, of course, I'm not as big as these artists, but you got somebody like J. Cole can come drop a dope project and disappear for two years and then come back and it's like he never left, you know what I mean? Because the quality, yeah, the quality is so good, you know what I mean? Um, So, nah, I don't, I don't get tied up into that. I, I get it from people, you know, people around me, they're always like, yo, put a record out, put something out, do this, do that, do that, but... I'm cool. Like I'm, I'm cool with the way I work. I, I think it's good. I don't need to like rush and just put out a bunch of filler material just to have material out, you know. But you know, also I think that uh, you know, I mean, like the way that like even like certain pop artists are doing now, like um, you know, like the EP. It seems like the EP is going to like is going to like become like the thing. Um, you know, just in a, just so people could try to like to so to make it seem like they're coming out with more, although they aren't really. Mm-hmm. Um, you know who started that shit, right? Who? I think Currency did, yo. Currency, um, shit, man. I think since, like, 2011, he was doing that shit. Like, he would do, like, the five-song, four or five-song EPs, and he was doing, like, two, three, four a year. And he made it, it looked like he was just always dropping a project, but it was always, like, four or five songs. You know what I mean? It was kind of like a... He was, like... It was like a mind fuck almost. You know what I mean? And then now... 2018 now you see that a lot you see people doing the four or five six song eps but they'll do them constantly you know just to make it seem like they're putting out a lot of projects i think that's the new wave you know what i mean like yeah i like it i like it but like i said it, you know the turnaround it's like if i if i do this you know against the grain and it goes well we could just we could spit another one out you know what i mean then another one then another one you know instead of just you know, putting out like a twenty twenty five song album, I think that kind of, I think that wave is over. You know what I mean? Unless you're a big artist like Drake or Chris Brown or something like that, then you know it helps with streaming and shit like that. Yeah, yeah, most yeah, most definitely. Yeah, because I think what didn't Chris Brown put like a like a three like a three disc album or something? <laughs> yeah, like, like, <laughs> it was like forty records or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> but like yeah. um, you know, the like Fonte, like he came out with an album. I think what like two months ago, I want to say. And, you know, it kind of came out of nowhere, and it's, it's like, I think, nine or ten tracks, and it's only, like, 29, 30 minutes. Yep. And I read this uh, this interview. Is that, because, you know, I'm not, I'm not, like, I was never, like, a big Little Brother fan, but, like, I, I respect this album a lot, um, the one he just came out with. And the person, the interviewer asked him, like, well, you know, you waited so long for this album to come out, you just dropped it out of nowhere, why is it so short? And he said, because I make music, I make music for people who have shit to do. Yo, damn. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I never heard that. I like that. I like that one. Never heard that before. See, you know what it is? Um, he's right. You know, I, I feel like um, I know I'm not 19 no more, so I'm not making music for that crowd. You know what I mean? So I got to cater to my. I know like my audience, people are working and they got families and they're doing they, what they, what they got to do. So we got to move on the same time. You see what I'm saying? I guess it depends on your sound, though, because you can have a lot of older artists, but if you have, like, a young sound, it's a little different. You know what I mean? You might have somebody like a 2 chains, or, like you said earlier, Future. They're a little older, but they still cater to a young audience, so they can put music out frequently. You know what I mean? It works for them. I guess it depends on the audience that you're, you're trying to, you know, tap into. 
Yeah, I mean, yeah, and you know, I, I think that Fonte line, um, it was it was eye opening for me, just or at least just like how he put it, because like you know, I realized as I'm getting like a bit older, you know, when I was younger, I was like 20 years old, whatever, like that. You know, I didn't mind, I didn't necessarily mind the album. You know, I was well, I was still kind of picky about how long it should be, but like if it was like a 40 something minute album, I was cool with it. But if it was like 30, 29 minutes, I would be like, you know, I would question why that is. But nowadays, you know, some of my favorite artists have come out with something that's like 60 minutes. I'm like, why is this shit so long? Because I don't even have like the attention span at the time like to sit through the entire album sometimes. So, you know, you just got mm-hmm. the shit you got to do. And then like, I guess it's the way technology is too, just kind of, you know, making making us a bit more scatterbrained or um, or whatever like that. But um, right. but uh, I guess going back to, uh, to, to the whole ghostwriting thing um, for you, uh, I guess since, since you know since you are primarily like a um, art, you are a hip hop artist. You know, you're out there in the forefront. Um, was that is that like also like a do you, you have to like transition, um, make that pivot, and how was that for you? Um, it's a little different when you're writing from a um, perspective of another person. You know what I mean? So it is a transition, but I mean, I guess with me being so versatile. It, it makes it easier for me. Like, I've always been a versatile artist, like, from when I first started writing, because, um, like, my parents was into Temptations and Luther Vandross and Prince and shit like that. So, like, I came up listening to that Earth, Wind & Fire, and then it went from that to to, to hip-hop. Like, hip-hop wasn't my first, you know what I mean? Like, that was my first, because my parents were older. And then I went to hip-hop, and then, like, you know, then the nineties R and B, the whole new Jack Swing ever. So like I just took all that all those elements and combined it into my writing. So I always had like the melodic hooks and, you know, different shit. You know, I I, I study like melody and shit like that. So, you know, it like when it comes to R and B, it's more so like I could come up I could write something like melodically. I could just come up with the melody and I could just put the words to it. You know, after I speak to the artist and I'm like, yo, what you want to talk about? You know, tell me about, you know, your life or, you know, what you feeling. And I could just put the words to it after that. You know what I mean? So it's not, it's a transition, like, compared to, like, me doing music for myself. But it's not really hard. You know what I mean? Like, I think I kind of got it down pat at this point. Could you see yourself, you know, if you, um, as you, you know, as you get a bit older, like, kind of, like, fading a bit uh, fading a bit more toward, uh, away from the limelight and just going a bit more into ghostwriting? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah, that's my plan. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, that's my plan. I mean, not right at this moment, but yeah, along the lines, I would, I would like to fade into the back. Yeah. Right. Not only just write, but help artists. Like, I really want to help young artists with just the business part of music. You know what I mean? Because, like, I, I kind of get baffled when I speak to a lot of young artists and they know nothing about the industry and it bothers me. You know what I mean? Like from something as simple as just copywriting their name and shit like that. You know what I mean? Like just, so just that with, you know, how to deal with, you know, booking shows and, you know, performing and being on the road and things like that. You know what I mean? We got a lot of hands on experience from doing that early on and being independent. So you know, more so than just ghostwriting and writing, I want to help young artists with their industry and getting their business right. You know what I mean? I feel like if I learned it, it's only right for me to pass it down. You know what I mean? Yeah, you know, that's uh, that that's very true. And, you know, and I think, you know, and, I, and this is like something that we always tend to go like go back and forth on, I think, just in hip hop in general, just like, you know, how much should the um the you know like the older generation reach out to the younger ones and then the fact that the younger ones don't embrace the older ones and you know i think that i don't know i feel like that that, that entire debate will probably um continue like to, to go on to, since you know hip-hop is still such like a, a it's such like a youthful culture yeah it and, is. and everything like that which i don't know maybe maybe it'll be a um a good thing since it's like you know since it you know it uh you know, it evolves so fast and everything like that because it is it is more of a young, a young man's game compared, like, to rock, for example, or something like that. Yeah, it's definitely a young man's game. I think you, you run into the issue of, you know, you get a young dude who's, he gets hot and he's getting money. So he might look at this nigga like, yo, like, what can you tell me? Like, I'm hot right now. I'm getting bread. Like, I, I, I don't need to listen to you. It's kind of like the ego thing also. You know what I mean? But you just trying to give them game, just, you know, longevity-wise. You're just trying to show on the ropes. Like, all right, well, do this, do that, you know. You know, get your business right, you know, because this shit ain't going to last forever. 
you know, you might be a flash in the pan. You don't know like how this is gonna work out for you. You know what I mean? So yeah, if it if it is that type of situation, you know, you want to make sure you got your business down. So you look like a you look at an artist like Freeway, or even you know Q, you know one from One Twelve. You know these artists are still they can still go around the whole world and perform and do their hits that they made 10, 15 years ago. You know what I mean? Like yeah, you want to get, you want to, you want to have a lasting effect, you know? One group that does have a lasting impact like them is Wu-Tang. So, um, what's your, uh, your favorite Wu-Tang song? My favorite, ah, uh, mystery. Ah, you know what? I, I always say that. I, I, I guess cause that's the first one. That, that's the first one. Uh, mystery of chess box. I don't know. Like it depends on my mood. Like, they got so many. I could wake up and just it'd be a different one every day. You know what I mean? Um, it could be Triumph. Uh, older God. I, I really like older guards. Fourth made that beat. Yeah, about to say. Of course you do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm a little biased on that. Um, uh, I don't got a favorite member, but like. Growing up, meth meth was meth is like top five for me. You know what I mean? Um, he was like I don't know. I used to like try to emulate him. You know what I mean? Um, but the ice cream that hook like when I first heard that hook, I was like, bro, this is this is out of here. Like this, this song right here, oh man, it, it's crazy. I, um, so it just depends on my mood. You know what I mean? I don't think I have a favorite one, but if I would pick one. I would say Mystery of Chess Boxing because that's the first song that made me gravitate towards Wu Tang. Yeah. That's, that's not that's not a bad pick at all. Um yeah. Against the Grains coming out April twenty seventh and everything like that. Um after this, what's uh what's next on your plate? Uh man, right now we just we gonna get the visuals together, man. Um the the true video should be edited probably within the next two days. I shot it, it's done. Um, I don't want to give too much out, but like every song is going to have a visual to it. You know what I mean? So we working on something to where we're going to put together, you know, the, the videos and drop them a certain way. And I might even do something to where I combine it and do like a little mini movie, you know what I mean? And make the EP a soundtrack to the, to the movie, you know what I mean? So we just, you just working with a few different ideas and, um, you know, we're going to, we're going to make it work, man. And then after that, we just, you know, whatever comes with it, you know, hopefully I can get, you know, a couple of these festivals or something, you know, and get the shit out there. <laughs> That'd be good. And I guess in closing, where can people find you? Uh, you can find social media. Um, Instagram is biztheprince18, um, B-I-Z-Z-T-H-E, Prince18. Um, on Twitter, it's biztheprince. Same thing on Facebook, biztheprince. You know what I mean? Just, just, or you could just hit the Google button. It's going to pop up. Just follow me. And just follow me on this journey, man. Like, every day we posting new promo content to promote the EP. You know, we got the pre-orders up. Um, you get the pre-orders on iTunes, Google Play, Amazon. You get the truth for full. And then once the 27th hits, you automatically get the whole EP, you know, in your library and shit. So you'd be good to go. So, just, yeah, just follow me, man. Just follow me with this journey, man. We, we got a lot of work to do. You know, so far, so good. You know, but we're just still grinding. Word, man. Biz, thank you so much for coming on. I really appreciate it. I think it was, this was a, a good chat get, to get uh, get to know you a bit more, get to know your, your background, your process, and doing everything like that. Definitely, man. I appreciate the love, man. I appreciate, you know, you having me on and giving me this opportunity, bro. And with all that, we out. Peace.